I'm JK rolling with delight. I want to die. Hey, welcome back to Dream Daddy. Uh, we're going to go with Hugo's route this time. And I'm going to read a little bit of us meeting Hugo so you get a little bit of context. I arrive at Amanda's school and check in at the front desk. They give me a bright orange visitor sticker and send me on the way. On my way. I feel pretty haggard after not brushing my teeth or showering, but hopefully nobody will notice. Uh, I check my watch and am relieved to see that I'm only two minutes late. Wait, was it room 103 or 108? I spot a youth standing at his locker and approach him for help. Excuse me, do you know where Mr. Vega's classroom is? The youth turns and looks me up and down with heavily aligned eyes. <sighs> Come on, kid. I'm late for a meeting. Mr. Who? Mr. Vega. I don't know. Have you tried the exit? Okay, wise guy. Are you gonna help me or not? <sighs> Fine. Up those stairs and to the left. Can't miss him. I head up the stairs and walk around, unable to find Mr. Vega's class anywhere. After a couple minutes of searching, I head back downstairs. That punk youth sent me on a wild goose chase. <clears throat> I get back to where that low rent Gerard Way is standing, fully ready to give him a piece of my mind, when suddenly a head pops out from out of the classroom next to his locker. Oh. Lucian, don't you have a third period to get to? <sighs> Fine, Mr. Vega. Hmm? Wow. Now I'm officially 10 minutes late. I glare at him as he walks away. We're not cool. Hmm. You must be spicy boy. This period's almost over. Would you mind waiting in the back? Ah. One thing I've noticed is that uh, Hugo's voice sounds kind of weird. I think it was made with a different mic. <clears throat> Mr. Vega leads me in and I take a seat in one of the comically small students' desk in the back. I might get stuck in this. Also, how are you doing today? Hope you're having a wonderful day. I am doing fine myself. Oh. Alright, where were we? Now you can tell me about the unreliability of the narrator and JD Salinger's Catcher in the Rye. Hmm. Hey, yes, Colin? Colin stands up and does the thing where he blows into the crook of his elbow to make a fart noise. Hmm? The whole class erupts in laughter. Hmm. Alright, alright everybody. Very funny. Colin, please sit back down. Oh. Now Holden Caulfield is an unreliable narrator, narrator in the sense that the bell for the end of the period rings. All the students immediately get up and make a break for the door. What? Uh, remember to the, do the reading and answer the response questions on page 194 in your textbook. Nobody's listening. Hmm. Or not, I guess. Mr. Vega turns to me and sighs. Hmm. Middle schoolers, right? Don't you teach high schoolers? Hmm. Both. You know, buzzer cuts. Right. Hmm? Thanks so much for coming in. No, no problem, ah. Mr. Vega. Uh, please call me Hugo. Eh. I don't normally do these impromptu parent-teacher meetings, but as I'm sure you know, Amanda's a very bright student, and I'm concerned about her recent behavior. What's going on? Eh. Amanda has never been the most engaged student, but I know she cares. Recently, though, she's been falling behind. She's not completing assignments and has been doing rather poorly on tests. I normally chalk this up to senioritis, but... This is strange. I thought Amanda always shared everything with me. It hadn't even crossed my mind that something might be wrong. I just wanted to ask, is everything okay at home? Uh, we're gonna say she has a tendency to bottle things up. I haven't noticed anything different about her, but she always tends to put on a happy face no matter what. Oh. See if you can talk to her about it. I know she values you a great deal and would appreciate your guidance if she keeps heading down this road. <sighs> I know how important art school is to her and would hate to see her miss out on scholarship money that she clearly deserves. I'll make sure to talk to Amanda. Thanks for letting me know, Hugo. Hey. Anytime. On my way out, I stop, thinking for a moment. I turn to Hugo. Hey, Hugo? Uh. Yes. 
they ever catch that right? Oh. Yes. All right. All right. We're talking to Hugo at one of the barbecues. Matt and Hugo seem to be embroiled in an intense discussion. Craig looks on, smiling politely. I walk over to say hello. Well, I don't think it's fair to try to compare two art movements like that. Periods in art only exist because they're a unique byproduct of the social and political climate of time and place, and to try to take something like, say, the Rococo period and compare it to postmodernism uh, to postmodernism in America, you're completely disregarding the context in which a work of art is created. Matt and Hugo seem to be busy talking that they don't so busy talking that they don't notice me. Greg leans in. Dude, I have no idea what's happening. Uh, let's talk to Matt and Hugo. Oh. That kind of comparison just eliminates the reason art movements are so important in, important in the first place. Hmm. You're not wrong, but I think there's no harm comparing one work of art to another. You can definitely say that one painting is better than another, another if you're evaluating technical skill from a purely formless standpoint. If I showed you a Matisse and then something by the Dutch masters, which one would you say shows more technical prowess? Mm -hmm. I am so lost right now. I shoot a worried glance over to Craig, who returns it. <sighs> well, sure, you could say that the Dutch masters were technically more skilled, but I would argue that while the Dutch masters were better painters, Matisse had better paintings overall. Hmm. Uh, well, that's pretty subjective. Hmm. How do you mean? Uh, well, that painting of the guy with the apple in front of his face is pretty nice. But these rocks. Ah. That's a Magritte. Rene? Rene Magritte? Is that right? Right. Art, sorry. You're fine, dude. Ah. We're just discussing the importance of context when talking about artwork. Listen, all he has it was if you like Van Gogh or Picasso better. Um... Hugo throws up his hands in frustration. But they represent two completely different art movements. How could I possibly choose between the thick, creamy impasto of post-impressionism and the abstractionist beauty of cubism? Man, this is giving me flashbacks to art appreciation. Man, that's all way above my head. Me too. Ah, it's all good, man. The cool thing about art is that we all perceive it differently. A single piece could have a totally different effect on each person that looks at it. And that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Just one minute about that. Here you go, please. Oh. Sorry, sorry. I get really fired up about art stuff. Spicy boy, how are you liking the neighborhood? It's pretty nice. Everyone's, everybody's been super friendly. Oh. Seems like your daughter is fitting in just fine. Matt points across the yard to where Amanda, Daisy, and another young girl are playing. They are all sitting cross-legged legged in the grass, picking weeds and weaving them into little flower crowns. It's pretty adorable. The girl I don't recognize jogs over to us. Hey. It's Carmencita. What is it, sweetheart? It's a flower crown. I thought you looked cute in it. Oh. Well, there's only way, one way to find out. Matt takes the flower crown and places it on top of his head. The scene is adorable. Hey. Am I cool now? The girl stares at him, thinking it over. Hmm, nope. But you're slightly less uncool than you were before you put it on. Hey, yeah. Oh. Ah, hey, spicy boy, this is my daughter. Hello. I'm Carmen Sita. Hey. Alright, I'm gonna skip this. You've got dads. Alright, we're skipping ahead to uh, messaging Hugo. Middle school teacher, high school teacher, writer of scholarly articles on the 18th century literature for various esteemed publications. If you're on here to tell me that me, that my son put a cherry bomb in your trash, I know and I'm sorry. Hmm. Well, your turn on muscles. Interesting. Uh, what's your ideal date? Each of us read a different book on opposite sides on the, of the couch in comfortable silence. Okay. Seems like a cool dude. I navigate to Higo's Dan book page and type out a message. Hey Hugo, great seeing you at the barbecue. Wanna hang out sometime? 
I wait a few minutes from before the computer dings. So glad you messaged me. I definitely want to hang out sometime, but I have a favor to ask. Our class is going on a field trip to the aquarium today, and one of our chaperones called in sick. Is there any possible way you could come by and replace them? Uh oh. I completely understand if you don't want to or can't make it, but I'm gonna be honest with you here. It's the middle school class. I need as much help as I can get. I think about it for a moment. Man, that's all those screaming kids that I'd be accountable for. And they're in middle school. Arguably the worst age to be. Hmm. Amanda silently trudges into her kitchen and pours herself a bowl of cereal. Her eyes are a little puffy and almost as if she'd been crying. Morning, Amanda. Morning, Pops. Hey, are you alright? I'm fine. Oh, uh, of course, I'm fine. I just got to thinking about the Backstreet Boys. They had a reunion. The Backstreet Boys are back alright. Huh. But they're different. Huh. Something's wrong with them. Like their dreams someone once had, but can no longer remember. And no one's talking about it. They just go on like everything's normal. Uh, are you sure that's all you're upset about? If there's, you know, anything going on, just want you know that I'm here for you. And I'll always be here for you. Whether you need a shoulder to cry on or a strong dad to go kick someone's butt, I'm only a phone call away. Oh. Well, she just teleported to the other side. Thanks, Popsicle. I appreciate that. Huh. But I'm fine, really. I'm unconvinced, but I'll stop badgering her about it. I'm sure she'll tell me when she's ready. Hey, that was middle school for you. Aww. She just teleports back. Uh, bad, but nobody likes middle school. It's three years of bad acne, crying, and being generally terrible. That was my exact middle school experience. Ugh. Everyone sucks. No self-awareness. It's just a bunch of hormonal teenagers locked in a gross old building for 40 plus hours a week. Doing long division and starting fights over, I don't know, pizza day? Top 40s pop? Middle schoolers should be avoided at all costs. Mm. What was your middle school experience like? I didn't like it. I had my first crush in middle school and I'm so bitter about it. Alexis Stuggs, you hurt me and I'll never forget. Mm. What'd you do to you? I stare off into the middle into middle distance, remembering the 424 hours that we dated and the three times we held hands between class periods. Then I remember the bitter betrayal, her leaving me for Arnold Birmingham, and making me eat dirt in front of her. Jeez. I had my first boyfriend in middle school. I don't want to talk about it. See, middle schoolers are repent reprehensible. Wait, why are you asking about middle school? Oh, Mr. Vega requested my help to chaperone his middle school class to the aquarium. Just wanted to know what I was in for. Mm. You got to go to the aquarium? Are you kidding me? Mm. The last field trip I got to go was uh, to the clam chowder factory. They didn't even give us clam chowder. They gave us square pizza at a clam chowder factory. Oh, is that why you won't eat clam chowder anymore? No, it's because Bobby Wellingham threw up into one of the vats of clam chowder, and I'm the only one who saw it happen. That's gross. It haunts me. Right, let's leave that story firmly in the past. Anyway, you should just do do it. Mr. Vega sounds like... I thought that read, uh, you should just do Mr. Vega. Mr. Vega sounds like he could really use the help. Plus, you get to hang out with the, with cool fish. Amanda, I get weird, kind of weird about aquariums. The ocean makes me nervous. What? Are you worried that a whale is going to pop out of the touch tank and swallow you whole? Don't you put fear in my heart. <clears throat> well, do they have penguins there? Yes, they have penguins there. Yeah. Then it's settled. Penguins outweigh fear of ocean. I sit back at the computer and let Hugo know that I'm available. He tells me to meet him at the aquarium and gives me the address. I grab my keys and kiss Amanda on the forehead before I head out. I arrive at the aquarium to find that the school buses have beaten me there. Preteens huddle around their teachers in small groups, yelling at each other and goofing off. Every teacher looks like they're at their 
uh, wit's end. Eh. Hugo jogs up to me, looking frazzled. So glad you're here. Hugo. Uh. It's been at the back all morning. We're shorthanded, and most of the kids won't stop screaming, as I'm sure you know is the case with all middle schoolers. I blew through Amanda at 12. I'm all too familiar. Hmm? Great, well, it's you and me chaperoning a group of 10 kids. They're over here. Oh, 10. It's not so bad. Hugo walks me over to a gang of preteens who are all sitting on the ground, playing with their phones. They're not kicking each other like some of the group, other groups, so we're off to a good start. Hmm. Can you guys put your phones away? All the kids look up for a moment to stare at Hugo. They then go back to texting. At least they're quiet. Hmm. Too quiet. These guys are up to something. I could feel it. There's no way. They're too busy thinking about not getting food stuck in their braces to pull any stunts. It's middle school after all. Hmm. We'll see. Ooh. The classes start filing into the aquarium and Hugo hands out massive staple packets to a paper to each kid. These are due at the end of the field trip. Yes, this will be for a grade. No, you can't borrow a pencil. Aw, oh, come on, Hugo, you can't just give it homework on a field trip. The kids collectively groan and grab the sheets from Hugo. What's in the packet? Oh. Honestly, it's just busy work so the teachers can have a moment's rip reprieve. I think one of the questions asks them to sit quietly for 10 minutes to think about the Great Barrier Reef. Teacher hacks. I like that. <clears throat> Wait, I thought you were an English teacher. What does the aquarium have to do with books? Oh. Ah, we just did the, a unit on the old man in the sea. Nothing quite like introducing kids to the futile, futile perseverance of the human spirit by making them pet stingrays. Oh. It gives us time to check out some of the exhibits as well. Come on, they have a phenomenal selection of tropical fish. While the kids sit on the floor and pretend to do their assignments while they text, Hugo and I wander over to a large tank filled with brightly colored fish. Hugo points out to a brown and white fish with long spines. Ah. That right there is a, lion, a lionfish. Did you know that their stomachs can expand up to 30 times in size? Whoa. Mm. Their spines are venomous too. Nature is hardcore. Oh. You think that's bad? Take a look at this one over here. Hugo points to a spiny, grumpy-looking fish hanging out near the bottom of the tank. Hmm, what is that? Ah. That's a stonefish, the most venomous fish in the world. And they just, like, keep it here? Oh, they're relatively harmless, so long as you don't step on them. What happens if you step on them? Oh. Tissue necrosis. Your skin dies. Cool. Mm. Nature is wild. Man, Hugo seems to know a lot about fish. I feel the overwhelming need to impress him. Hey, see that fish over there? Hmm. Th that one? Yeah, that's the... Oh, God. American longfish. Hmm? Yeah? Did you know that... Uh... Psychiatric fish trivia? This is the only species of fish known to develop clinical depression. Hmm? Wait, are you serious? Absolutely not. I'm playing it for the gag here. Oh! Ah, good one. We lead the kids to another room. Sharks, sea turtles, eels, and other marine life swim around a massive floor to ceiling aquarium. The kids begin to trying to take selfies with the sharks. Hugo leaves my side to separate two kids who started fighting over Capri Sun. I walk around the room reading the tiny little blurbs about different fish swimming inside the enclosure. After a while, I look and see Hugo again. He's gazing up at the aquarium in childlike wonder. The ripples in the water cast blue, moving shadows across his face. For someone surrounded by angry, hormonal preteens, he looks completely peaceful. He looks really cute in this light. I hope he doesn't notice me staring. Wow. I walk over to join him. Beautiful, isn't it? Uh, let's not be so direct, you know? 
We can learn a great deal from Mother Ocean. A great many mysteries lie in the ocean. It truly is fascinating to be able to observe it in a setting such as this. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> That's a very astute point, spicy boy. We stand together for a moment, admiring the wonders of marine life. We eventually make our way to the touch tank room, which seems to be the only thing kids are actually interested in. The tank is filled with a variety of horseshoe crabs, uh, sea urchins, stingrays, and small fish. I've never seen horseshoe crabs uh, in real life. Stand around the edges of the tank and keep a wary distance from the sea life. Who knows what kind of nefarious plans those horseshoe crabs have my, for my well-moisturized hands. Ego rolls up his sleeve and sticks his hand in the water. Don't you want to pet some rays, spicy boy? Oh, I, I think I'm good. I don't really. I, I think I should just stay over here and admire them from a respectable distance, you know. Come on, it'll be fun. And informative. Don't make fun of me, but I'm scared to touch them. I get weird when there's no glass separating us. I don't know what anything those things are, but I get the feeling that they will probably bite me and my delicious hands if given the chance. Nothing in this tank can hurt you. The stingrays have had their barbs removed, the horseshoe crabs only eat little clams, and the anemones, uh, anemones are perfectly safe to touch. Against my better judgment, I approach the tank, slowly dipping my hand into the cold water. I touch the stingway, sting ray as it glides past me. See, not so bad. It feels like fun, slimy leather. Things get a lot less scary when you learn more about them, right? I dive my hand back into the touch tank with a renewed vigor for ocean life. I poke at some urchins and feel the hard carapace of a horseshoe crab. My hand brushes against Hugo's as we re reach for the same anemone. I pull away, blushing. Hugo smiles at me. Oh, Hey, you're supposed to be touching the fish. Uh, sorry, I just get a little carried away some that. Wait. That girl over there looks suspicious. Why is that? Oh. Are backpacks usually that wet? Hold on. Uh-oh. Susan. Susan, get back here. Hugo runs after a middle schooler and catches her before she can make it to the exit. Want to tell me what's in the bag? Uh, textbooks? Want to tell me what's really in the bag? Susan won't budge. I walk over to Hugo and the girl. I think he might need a bad cop. Look, kid. We don't have time for games here. Whatever it is, it goes back into the touch tank. Now. You're not a teacher. You can't tell me what to do. Oh. Yes, well, I am. Can you please put the bag down? Next time, we won't say please. Susan glares at Hugo for a moment before dropping her book bag on the floor. It lands with a wet slap. We stare at it for a moment before it starts to move. What? Hugo leans down and unzips the backpack. A horseshoe crab frantically scuttles out and across the floor. An employee swoops in, scoops it up, and places it, places it back into the tank. She gives us a disapproving look. Jesus, Susan, what was your plan? I was trying to free him. To where? Outside? Where he's gonna die? Eh. Susan, go back to your group. We'll discuss this later. Yeah, there's hands where we can see him. Susan sulks off, leaving me alone with Hugo. He gives me a pat on the shoulder. Oh. Middle schoolers have sticky hands. I doubt that's the first time that's happened here. Or the last. In the next room, we see a variety of smaller tanks, sea urchins, tiny fish, and a rainbow of beautiful underwater plant life surround us. Yes. Look over there. Hugo points to some seahorses gathered at the bottom of the tank. Or two some seahorses? One of them is in the middle of giving birth. Mm. That's actually the male seahorse. Sort of takes fatherhood to a new level, doesn't it? Hey kids, come check this out. There's a male seahorse giving birth. A low murmur from the students. They just jump back on their phones. Hey. Fun fact, male seahorses can even give birth and then get pregnant in the same day. 
Man, we thought we had it hard. Hey. I wonder if they'll have to deal with their kids' awkward teenage years, too. All however many thousand of them. You seem to know a lot about marine life, Hiko. Ah. It's not really my specialty, but I do make a point to learn as much as possible whenever I can. I think that learning shouldn't end when you leave school. We should challenge ourselves to find out more about things we don't understand every day of our lives. Because if you stop learning, I don't think you'll ever be able to grow or change as a person. Good point. But I still don't trust the ocean. We'll get there. We finally make our way over to my favorite part of the tour. The Arctic Exhibit. Do we get to see the penguins? Ah. Yes, we get to see the penguins. Hell yes. Our, our group of kids run around the exhibits. They won't stop tapping on the glass of the puffin enclosure trying to get their attention. For at least a few moments, teachers, chaperones, and students alike seem to be having a great time. What was I so worried about? This isn't too bad. Sweet man, Chago. Hugo suddenly grabs my arm. Oh my god. <laughs> There's a student in the penguin enclosure. Wait, just kidding, it's very bad. Is it one of ours? <sighs> it most certainly is. Molly Henderson, Susan's friend. I look over to the penguins and see a determined looking kid crouching behind the rock. She's hiding just out of sight of one of the employees. Over on the side of the enclosure, I see the door to exhibit a jar. Was it unlocked this whole time? We gotta stop her before the staff sees and banners, bans our school for life. Hugo looks around. I'll create a distraction. Hugo runs towards the puffin exhibit and addresses the entire room. Everybody, 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 I have an announcement. The whole room turns towards Hugo. Um... Uh, here's a few facts I bet you didn't know about penguins. Everybody just stares at Hugo, confused. Well, this is my shot. I run into the enclosure and am greeted by a cold blast of air. Psst, hey. The girl whips around to look at me. Her nose is pink from the cold. You can't be in here. Neither can you. I try to walk over to the girl, but the ground is so icy that I end up slipping. I catch myself before I hit the ground, but the girl still laughs at me. Eh. Uh, uh, contrary to popular beliefs, uh, penguins are birds. Birds are traditionally known to fly, but penguins cannot. So I can understand some uh, confusion when we're discussing the uh, birdness of penguins. The crowd is somehow enraptured. Kid, what are you even doing? I'm letting the penguins go. They deserve freedom. Where are they even going to go? They're gonna live in my closet. Look, I just don't even have time to argue about this. We gotta get out of here. Not until I save a penguin. <sighs> uh, the little fact is that penguins only live in cold climates. Uh, w with some exceptions, so they don't all live in cold climates if you're splitting hairs here. Did I mention that they don't fly? The ground is starting to lose interest. I'm running out of time. Uh, let's see. Let's try to relate to her. I think back to the time I released all the feeder mice from the pet store. It was a disaster. I was six, but, I still, but it was a disaster. Molly, you know, life can be cruel. Money. Give me money. I will give you $20 right now if you leave with me. Molly thinks for a second. Okay. Oh, well, give it to me right now. I reach into my pocket and pull out everything I have, examining each bill. Okay, well I have $12 and some change, and there's a button here. Is that enough? Pay me the other eight later and we have a deal. We move to Jake on our agreement before I suddenly realize there's a wave. Hmm. Ah, excuse me. We move to shake on our arrangement before I suddenly realize there's a wave of penguins on their way out of the enclosure. We're gonna have to block these birds. Playing a minigame. Alright, how am I? Nope. You get out of here. Get out of here. I'll slap all of you. Can I just do this? Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Get out of here. How long do I have to do this for? over. Just in time, too. Looks like Hugo's wrapping up his diversionary penguin speech. Hmm. And that's why I think penguins are one of the best animals in the world. A few people in the audience clap out of, sense, out of a sense of duty. Everybody starts dispersing. Hugo spots us from across the way and runs over. Molly, what were you doing in there? I was liberating animals, Mr. Vega. You realize that penguins can only survive in arctic temperatures, right? You would have had a damn dead penguin on your hands. Well, um, it was a thought that counts. No, Molly, it wasn't. Molly turns to me. You owe me eight dollars. Whoa! What? Just, I'll pay you later, kid. Molly runs off towards Susan. I suppose that they can compare animal thief notes. Uh. You're not off the hook, Molly. Uh. Spicy boy, did you just bribe a child? I bribed a child. It was the only way to get her out of the exhibit. I'm not proud of what I've done. I'm not proud of it either. Or of my Penguin Facts lecture. But at least we got her out. Hmm? Let's just get through the day and get out of here. <clears throat> With the day finally coming to a close, the whole field trip is ushered through the gift shop and we make our way back out to the school buses. As we leave the aquarium and the kids load onto the buses, Hugo pulls me aside. Ah. Hey, Spicy Boy, thank you so much for helping out today. You're a lifesaver. It was no problem. It was actually kind of fun. Ah. Let me take you out next time to make it up to you. You like cheese boards? Uh... There's nothing on earth more satisfying than a good cheese board. Let me save here first. Great, well... I gotta make sure the kids don't steal anything else. See you around. I walk inside to find the house empty. Hmm, I wonder where the panda's at. Before I know it, Amanda pops in through the front door. Oh. What you up to tonight? Just doing some homework. How's the aquarium? It was an adventure. Some kid tried to steal a penguin. Dad. We've all been there. I had to run in and grab her before any of the employees saw. Hey. You got to go into the penguin enclosure? Did you steal a penguin for us? Amanda, no penguins were stolen thanks to the valiant efforts of myself and Miss Vega. It was nice getting to spend some time with Hugo though. Huh. I'm surprised he helped complete a covert op. He's usually kind of a... Kind of a what? <laughs> kind of a stick in the mud. He's actually pretty cool. I had some good time with him. Alright, too much adventure for me today. I'm gonna go rest my eyes. You mean take a nap? There's a difference. You'll learn when you become a father. Hey! Oh, how did we do? That was so good you gave me goosebumps. Okay. Welcome! You've got dads! Alright, so we're gonna go on our second date with Hugo. Go ahead and message him. I really like his porn stash. I like a, I like a good porn stash. I should take Hugo up on his offer to hang out. I had a lot of fun with him at the aquarium. I type him, uh, I type out a message to him on Dadbook. Hey, still want a cheese board? Hugo responds within a few minutes. Uh, Colin is still being a humongous shithead. It won't stop sending the same picture of Jackie Chan and mesh shirt to the printer. And it's a nice picture, but it's wasting all my paper. Whoops, sorry, I meant that for another teacher. But seriously, he's insufferable. There's pictures of Jackie Chan everywhere. I type back. Save a couple for me. My Jackie Chan scrapbook is a little light on content. I think this would really round it out. Ah, let me get back to you after class ends. I stand up from the computer and stretch. 
Well, I guess there's only one thing to do now. Dad nap. I hop on the couch and turn on some Antiques Road Warrior for background noise. I got this ornate cabinet from a yard sale for five bucks in 1982. To be told that it once belonged to a Confederate general is a huge surprise. This will feed my tribe for weeks. I really like the way the appraiser's voice echoes through the mouthpiece of his leather armor bondage gear. Maybe that this is that ASMR thing Amanda keeps telling me about. I drift off to sleep. I did not need that picture in my head. I'm jolted awake by a dad book message from Hugo. Hey, sorry about that. Colin's in the principal's office now. He said that he knows Jackie Chan personally and that Jackie won't be happy to hear about this. I get off work in a little while, and I continue to be very serious about the cheese boards. I fumble out a reply. A reply, excuse me. Yeah, so am I. Hugo and I work out the details, and I'm all set to meet him in a few hours. Just getting home from school. Where are you going? Oh, I have a meeting with the board. The board? Um, a cheese board is what I meant. I'm getting cheese with your teacher. Will you be able to fend for yourself until dinner time? Hmm. Yeah, I'll live, but only if you can talk him into going easy on me for the final. Sorry, buddy. That ball's in your court. What's in my court, you ask? Just a variety of delicious cheeses, meats, and their company crack company crackers. Excuse me. Uh, maybe some olives. A little bit of fig jam. <laughs> yes, yes, I get it. You're excited about the cheese. Sweetie, you'll get it one day, but now I gotta see a man about some manchego. Please leave. I walk into a quaint French diner and Hugo waves me down to a booth in the corner. He looks pretty tired. A long day? I don't know. Every day is a long day when you teach middle schoolers. Oh. Colin starting a, uh, started a gambling ring. The pictures of Jackie Chan were just the cover. He's bartering in those little rubber band bracelets that are also shapes. Silly bands? Is that the one parents think means sex stuff? Those ones, yeah. But the reports are just the sensationalist news media capitalizing on the fears of suburban parents, as usual. <sighs> At least I hope. Yikes. Oh. Right now I'm very, uh, very ready for f some fine wine and some delicious cheese. The waitress stops by and takes our order for the biggest cheese plate you have. For the love of God, just please put the cheese in my mouth. And recommends us some wine. Uh, do you two want a scorecard for trivia? There's trivia? Yep, we're starting in a few minutes. Pretty much everyone here is playing. Oh! We'd love to play, right Spicy Boy? Uh, yeah, sure. Let me just save. The waitress hands us a scorecard, and a few pencils before leaving. I might not be much help here. I'm not very good at being smart, I guess. Come on, I doubt it would be hard, too hard. Spicy boy! I turn to see Matt and Brian here with their daughters. Looking like they're ready for trivia, they've come to our table to greet us. Hey guys, you all here for the old question and answers game? Hey. Yep, we come here every week. But Brian and Daisy carry the team. Carmen, Zita, and I are just here for the cheese. <laughs> Provolone 2, last in New York, has have been reigning champions for the last month. Man, Brian's great at trivia too? That raises the stakes. Great name though. Solid team name. That's Carmen, Zita's claim to fame. It hurts me how good I am at puns. <laughs> like father, like daughter. Hey. You guys want, uh, gonna tr try to give us a run for our money? Mm. We'll see what we can do. Uh, let's see. Uh, we'll see what we can do to not hurt your feelings too bad. The cheese will taste so much better with the side of victory. You and I bump fists. Tag team champions. Mm. We'll have to think of up of a good team name, but I think this will be fun. Good luck. Brian, Matt, and their daughters head back to their table. Well, I guess we need a name. Hmm. Are Brian and uh, Matt on a date? That's adorable. Got any good ideas? Uh. 
Averti like it's 1999. Averti like it's 1999? That'll do just nicely. The waitress comes by with our cheese board and we revel in its glory. Already I can see a piece of cheddar with my name on it. I pair it with some strawberry preserves and slide it into dairy-induced ecstasy. There's such a fine variety of cheese and charcuterie that I'm positively, positively overwhelmed. A quick dip into the seasoned nuts, a slice of savory yet salty gouda, or perhaps a focaccia crisp topped with honey and goat cheese. I'm so happy. Hugo raises his glass at me. Oh! Cheers to cheese. Hey, hey. A middle-aged man in a backwards baseball cap. Sunglasses and cargo shorts jogs out of the back with the frenetic energy of a radio DJ. Not this guy. Everybody ready for, uh, for some trivia? The restaurant cheers. Oh man, looks like everyone's really into this. That's what I like to hear. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Quizmaster Quinn. My actual name's Richard. I just like alliteration. More cheers. I see some of you brought your children here tonight. That's cool. My children won't speak to me. Jeez. Ah, I'm just joking around. Classic quiz master Quinn humor. It's actually my wife that won't speak to me. She doesn't want kids. Man, <laughs> let's get into some questions. The first category is literature. Excellent. Do you know who loved literature? My dead father. I looked up to him so much. More jokes. Classic quiz master quips. Just trying to keep it like here, folks. Just like I thought my wife was the, was the light of my life. <clears throat> Hugo, you got this literature stuff, right? Ah. Does Franz, Franz Kafka have the rational fear of one day waking up as a large, grotesque, insect-like creature? Yes. Alright, let's save. This is the continent that encompasses the realms of Gondor, Rohan, Mordor, and Lothlorien? I don't know anything about Lord of the Rings. Other notable sites include Isengard, the Mirkwood, and Rivendell. What is the elvish name for this continent? Uh... Endor? Correctamundo. Really? It was writer who that created Tarzan and John Carter of Mars. Oh man, I don't know any of these. Uh, we'll load until we get all these right. Uh, Edgar Rice Burroughs? Okay, Edmund Dantes is better known as this man. Mm. The Count of Monte Cristo? Correct. The quiz master walks around the room. I think he's doing crowd work. He stops by mine and Hugo's table. Whoa, nice cheese plate you got there. Uh, thank you? How's that cheese tasting, big guy? Um, good. <sighs> Great. Cheese used to be my favorite food, but I developed a lactose intolerance later in life. I... I'm sorry to hear that. I also developed clinical depression. Oh. But people don't tell you to just get over your lactose intolerant ru intolerance, right? Nobody's like, have you tried exercising to get rid of your debilitating dairy allergy? Or you just need to, or you just need to choose not to let your throat close up when you eat brie. Hmm. This is so awkward. Anything? Does that scan? I'm trying to workshop my routine here. Quizmaster Quinn wanders off to another table. Who wants to start the next round? More cheers from the audience. The next round is cinema. Oh man, I love movies. Sometimes I retreat into them for days on end, because obsessing over a fictional universe is easier than engaging with my real emotions and problems. Frodo Baggins, am I right? Is he okay? Um. I think it's just his character. I hope. How's your cinema? Mm. Spotty. I don't know a lot about movies, but if there are any questions about bad horror movies, I can be of service. That's an interesting one. Oh. It's a bit of a guilty pleasure. Uh, okay, let's save. In Return of the Jedi, what does Luke ask Leia if she remembers? Uh, their mother? 
Correct. Okay, what entertainer makes a fourth, I've only watched it once, makes a fourth wall breaking appearance in the film Gremlins 2? Hmm. That's weird. I guess I was right the first time. Uh, which of these 80s horror movies dies not feature... What? <clears throat> An Indian burial ground as part of its setting. Does not feature... Correct. It was Poltergeist? I thought that was on a burial ground. Seems like we're doing pretty well, but we're neck and neck with Brian and Matt's team. Those guys are pros. I look over to the table and give them a friendly but competitive nod. I lock eyes with Brian. He gets a much sterner nod. And the next category is wrestling. Okay, we're totally boned. Unless you gotta know something about wrestling. Hugo grabs my arm. Oh. Wait, I got this. Huh? Man, you know who I wanna, uh, would want to wrestle with? Literally anyone. I crave human interaction. Please put me in a chokehold. Please. It has been so long since I've been held. I can only process my emotions by making jokes out of them. I am very weirded out. I... Let's start the quiz. Remember that this is the lightning round. The first people to answer get the points. I look over to Hugo. He's focused. He's in it to win it. Question 1. This was the original name of the Stone Cold Steve Austin in his debut for the WWE. Mm. Hugo's hand shoots up. Yes, the enthusiastic one over there. Steve Austin debuted as the ringmaster. Oh. That is correct. Points to Havarti like it's 1999. Hmm. Next question. The city was the location of the first ever WrestleMania. Oh. It goes hand shoots up again. Yes, the one who looks like he has known the answer for his entire life. Oh. The first WrestleMania was held in New York, New York at Madison Square Garden in 1985. Hmm, maybe that's he, that no wrestling. Correct. Another correct answer for, for Havarti like it's 1999. Hugo's destroying these questions. He's so passionate about this. I've never seen him act like this before. It's honestly kind of hot. Ooh, a tough one. This title match went down in history as the shortest match at WrestleMania to date. Hugo jumps up more excited than I've ever seen him. Oh. Chavo versus Kane. Ooh, sorry, Bako. But that is incorrect. The answer is actually Daniel Bryan versus Sheamus at WrestleMania 28. No, that's that's absolutely wrong. The real record is Chavo Guerrero versus Kane, WrestleMania, WrestleMania 24, March 30th, 2008. Kane took down Chavo with one choke slam and pinned him for the three count. I will not stand for this travesty. Hey man, I'm just reading from the card here. I don't actually write these. Well, you're still wrong. One of you, my ex-wife. The crowd erupts in laughter. Hugo blushes. He retreats back into his chair. Hmm? Fine. Wow, Hugo seemed really fired up about that. Where did he get this encyclopedic knowledge of wrestling? How do you know about so much about wrestling? I don't know. Oh, I, uh, you know, you just pick stuff up. Maybe his son likes wrestling? That sounds suspect, but it seems like he doesn't want to talk about it. I turn my attention back to the Chris Master. Oh. All right, all right, all right. Looks like we're down to the final category. And it's the close one between Provolone 2, Lost in New York, Brian and Matt High Five, and a Vardy like it's 1999. Hugo and I High Five. We look over to Brian and Matt, Carmencita, and Daisy all playfully give us thumbs down and sticks the, stick their ton tongues at. I eat a big chunk of cheddar without breaking eye contact to show them just how serious I am. The final category is cool animals. Animals, huh? I never could take care of another living thing. Hell, I can barely take care of myself. <laughs> I'm falling apart. Anyway, here's the questions. The Canary Islands, Islands were named after what kind of animal? Um, uh, dogs. That's right. What is the last animal that appears in the dictionary? Zizi Viva? Maybe? Correct. 
All right, mem what mammal has the thickest concentration of fur in nature? Otter. Correctamundo. All right, I'm just gonna come around and collect your scorecards, and we'll see who came out on top. Remember, the winning team gets a $25 gift card to Phil's Auto Care. If you need a car part, Phil's will fulfill your all your needs. Everyone oohs and ahs. God, I want that gift card. The quiz master goes into the back to tally up the score. I pick up uh, what's left on off of our cheese plate. There's a bit of brie here that tastes absolutely divine on the cracker with a little bit of honey and dried apricot. Mm. So what are your plans after a big win? Hmm, I'll probably retire, take a man to somewhere tropical, drink something out of a coconut. Always wanted to do that. What about you? I'll probably take my winnings to uh, Colin's gambling ring. Bet it on, Black. Walk out of there with with more rubber bands and the shape of animals that I know what to do with. Bold, but I like your style. Hey! You want the last piece of Harvardi? Nah, that's all you. You definitely earned it. After a couple of minutes, the quiz master jogs back into the room. Everyone immediately quiets down, waiting with bated breath for the results. Who will win the covered gift card? I really hope it's us. Hey, everybody. We had a great night. Lots of goofs, lots of laugh, a little bit of light crying in the back. But that's neither here nor there. But by last night, landslide, the winner of tonight's contest is... I've already like it's 1999. Come on down and get your gift card for Phil's Auto Care. Where phenomenal service is... God, I can't do this anymore. Please just take the gift card. I motion for Hugo to get the gift card, and he shyly slinks out of the booth to grab it. He pauses for a moment and gives the quiz, quiz master a hug with a few pats on the back. The quiz master sobs. Just a little. Hugo makes a victory lap back to our table and gives me a high five. A Vardy like it's 1999 is unstoppable. A Vardy like it's 1999 is great. May a Vardy like it's 1999 reign for a thousand years. Hey, great work, guys. You guys did awesome. We, will we be seeing a birdie like it's 1999 again next week? I look over at Hugo, who smiles. Maybe so. We make a pretty good team, huh, Hugo? Ah. Hugo blushes. Hugo and I walk back towards our cul-de-sac, basking in the glow of our wind and nursing our cheese-filled bellies. Man, we crushed it in there. Ah. <clears throat> Finally, enduring the screams of young children for years on end has paid off. I will take half of this gift card and use it to purchase many, many air fresheners for my car, which Ernest refuses to stop vaping in. I think I'll use my half to buy at least two pre tire pressure gauges to place in different parts of my garage. You never know when you're going to need one, and I prefer to have them within an arm's reach. A fine plan. Shame about that one wrestling question, though. Hmm. I'm not kidding. I plan to write a strongly worded letter to whoever employed that man. Come on, there's gotta be a story there. Oh. What do you mean? You didn't even stop to think. You pulled that wrestling knowledge out like you were there at the ring yourself. Oh, it's just stuff I know. Uh, save. Ask again. Hugo, I figured you'd be better at lying after dealing with every kid in school for as long as you have. I, uh... It's embarrassing. Okay. You know what's actually embarrassing? Not being able to explain basic algebra to your daughter. You know def what's definitely not embarrassing? Knowing stuff about wrestling. Hugo sighs. Um. Alright, alright. If you really want to know, just... Follow me. Ooh. Hugo leads me to his house at the edge of the cul-de-sac. We step inside and his house is exactly what I expected it to be. Neat and filled top to bottom with books and art. Ah. Uh, welcome to my home. Sorry it's so messy. His house is actually spotless. I follow him down the hallway. What are we doing? Are we wrestling? Hugo opens the door and ushers me inside. It's pitch black. He closes the door behind us. Hugo flips the switch, and finally, I finally understand. Jeez. Kiro cabinets filled, packed with inbox wrestling action figures line the walls. 
along with posters, cardboard cutouts, and every piece of wrestling memorabilia imaginable. A giant widescreen TV sits on a decked out media stand. I'm speechless. I look over to Ed Hugo, who's hovering by the door doing everything to avoid eye contact. Yeah. It's, uh, this is really embarrassing. Let's see. This is the coolest thing I've ever seen. Are you kidding? Look at all this stuff. This must have taken you forever to collect. Can I touch this? Go ahead. I pick up one of his replica championship belts and toss it over my shoulder. Do you smell what I'm cooking? Mm -hmm. I think the line is, it's meatballs. Sorry, I don't not watch a lot of wrestling. I just think it's cool how passionate you are about this. Do you smell what the rock is cooking? Hey. Oh, uh, yeah, I am. I, uh, I really, really like wrestling. He's blushing so hard right now. Hugo, you brought the wrong cat pizza rolls again. Looks like Ernest has got home. He's yelling in from the hallway. I can see Hugo immediately deflate. Ah. I told you, those pizza rolls have less sodium. I just want you to be healthy, son. Ernest comes into Hugo's wrestling room and looks around with disgust. He notices me and scoffs. I thought nobody was allowed in your precious wrestling room. I never said that. I just said you're not allowed to take the action figures out of their boxes and pose them so they're having sex with each other. Ernest gets flustered. Yeah, well, whatever. I'm gonna go throw eggs at stuff. Have fun with your stupid wrestling crap. Man, what a little brat. Ernest leaves, then a moment later pops his head back in the room. And your stupid friend. Ernest stomps back out of the room. I hear the door slam. Hugo really runs his hand through his hair. Uh, sorry about him, and sorry that I have to keep apologizing about him. He's just going through a phase, I guess. I try so hard to impress him, but it's obvious that no matter what I do, he hates me. Ernest has a thing against authority figures, and you don't get much authoritative, more authoritative, uh, authoritative than a teacher dad. My ex, he gets to be the fun weekend dad, and I'm just Hugo, who makes Ernest eat his vegetables and turn in, turn his homework in on time. Hey, you love him, and you're looking out for his best interest. Take him from one dad to another. Someday he'll come to appreciate you. Maybe not someday soon, but. Someday. I hope so. Oh. Thanks for letting me vent. Hugo glances at his watch. Oh. Suppose it's getting kind of late. Let's do the trivia again sometime soon? I would absolutely love to. I start to leave. And hey, thanks for showing me your wrestling stuff. Maybe you can tell me some more about it next time. Hugo smiles. Hey. That would be amazing. I'll catch you around. It only takes me a minute to walk back home. Amanda's sitting on the couch, reading a book about female photographers. Wow, I thought you didn't like reading. Mm -hmm. I don't. This book is all pictures. And, and even then, my patience is being tried. Uh. Did you get to eat all the cheese your little heart desired? I am a happy little cheese monster. But I made sure to leave room for dinner. Who wants breakfast for dinner? Right. Hash browns! Okay. Toast dipped an egg. Alright. Blueberry pancakes. Well, only if you help me make them. You know I'm the world's best blueberry sprinkler. And also, totally amazing at heating up the maple syrup in the microwave. Totally realize I'm doing a terrible voice for her. Now tell me all about that cheese board. Amanda and I spend the evening cooking an elaborate breakfast with everything we can find inside the fridge. I tell her all about the trivia, but leave out the best parts about Hugo being into wrestling. I figured she would probably find out, uh, <clears throat> find some nefarious way to use that information for a better grade. I'm JK Rowling with delight. I want to die. All right, time for our last uh date with Hugo. Hugo is actually a lot uh, cooler. I thought he'd be when I 
uh, first started playing, I thought he was going to be like kind of a snooty guy. He's not. He's actually really cool. And apparently he's into wrestling. Probably into bar dudes. He likes big boys. Okay, yeah, I'm sure that he is my dream daddy. Ever since the first night at uh, sh Charcuterie Pies, you and I have made a point out of weekly vids visits to Trivia Night. Havarti Like It's 1999 has come in first place ever since, despite Provolone 2 last in New York's continual efforts to dethrone us. I've been able to do a complete overhaul of the interior of my car thanks to all of the Phil's Auto Care gift cards we've received. Air fresheners, car chargers, you name it. Amanda's let riding in the lap of luxury. Aside from trivia nights, I don't actually get to see Hugo a lot. The end of the school year is coming up, and he seems to be having a lot of trouble with dealing with the stress of teaching. I should do something nice for him. Maybe help him take his mind off of screening teenagers. <clears throat> books? He likes books, but I would have no idea where to start with that. He probably reads more books in a month than I've read in the past year. I know he's really into wrestling, but he's, he's been reluctant to talk about it since he showed me his wrestling room. I know he's kind of shy about it, but maybe. Whatever. Let's roll the dice. Uh, I think I have a plan. Hey, hey, all right, folks. Looks like we finally have the points tallied, and we're ready to announce our winner. You know who else is a winner? Me. Because I've finally seen just how beautiful and loving my wife is. A few weeks ago, all the regulars stayed in staged an intervention for Quizmaster Quinn. We sat down in a circle and told him that we wanted to see him be better and love himself. He agreed to start going to couples therapy with his wife, and the last time he told us that they adopted a dog together. I love you forever, my quiz master queen. I'm glad to see he has a happy ending. I can't tell which uh, version of quiz master queen I prefer. There were things to like and dislike about both, huh? The winner is... For the fourth week in a row, I've already like it's 1999. Ah. You and I cheer out our small slices of camembert, and I go to accept our gift card, along with an uncomfortably long hug from Quizmaster Quinn. The only reason I know how to say that is from Miraculous Ladybug. May I've already like it's 1999's reign be as long and wonderful as my marriage to my beautiful wife. Aww. Ah. We make our celebratory round of high fives to the rest of the teams and sit down to finish our cheese board, savoring every last bit of burra burrata with pesto and slices of tomato. Hey, I got a surprise for you. Hmm. For me? Yes, and for once, it isn't more cheese. Hey. Well, if you can think, you can somehow top that. Be my guest. I pull out a book that I've been carefully hiding in one of my pockets and slide it over to Hugo. Hmm. Oh. Hugo books, picks up the book and reads the title out loud. Oh. Harry Butts Crapper Keeper? I wanted to get you a book, but I figured you already pro that you probably already own every classical piece of literature. So uh, I thought this would be fun. For when you're pooping. Ah. <laughs> Hugo laughs. You should flip through it. Hugo looks up at me and raises an eyebrow. After flipping through a couple of pages, he finally comes across the small gift I strategically hid inside. Oh. You're kidding me. Hugo looks around, worried that he made a scene. He leans in. Mm. You're kidding me. Hugo pulls out the wrestling tickets I hid inside the crapper keeper. This is to the World Federation of Wrestling's Power Slam series. I love that. Adding a really good gift and a crappy gift. They've been working so hard lately. I thought you'd like them. Like oh. them? I... I love this. Thank you. But wait, there's two? Yeah, I figured we could go together. What? You'd go with me? Heck yeah. I'd need you to explain the firing points of wrestling to me though. He who gets up, walks around the table, and effortlessly picks me up in a big bear hug. Aww. Has he been the strong this whole time? Ah. Thank you. I let out a little squeak to sort of say, you're welcome. It's the night of the power slam. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, Hugo shows up at my doorstep in a loud, oversized wrestling tee. 
He's so cute. He's a little blushy and extremely cute. He is extremely cute. We drive about an hour to another city for the big event. Hiko spends the entire ride teaching me uh, basics of wrestling and terminology I need to know. So, it's fake, right? Hmm. Well, yes and no. While wrestling and the art of hurting another wrestler is fake, the work requires remarkable athleticism and oftentimes results in actual injury. Those people that are getting hurt, sure, but not in the way we're allowed to believe. Historically, wrestling as we know it today was created by carnival workers to fix gambling, and the people who actually believed it to be real and would bet on these matches were called mercs. That we know, uh, that we know that it's technically fake, but still choose to suspend our belief makes us smarks. Smart marks. So, I should be watching this for the acrobatics? Oh. And the tension, and the drama, and even the storylines. I think that anything or anyone can tell a good story. You just have to look for the story. Even something like uh, what we're about to experience will tell a phenomenal, sometimes understated story despite a ridiculous premise. Wow. Ah. What? I just really wouldn't have begged you for a huge wrestling fan. Ah. Nobody does. I get it. I'm the button-down teacher type. I like poetry and art history. I write dissertations on heavy tomes by Russian authors for fun. But I like wrestling. It's a big part of who I am because uh, it's considered kind of lowbrow. I feel like I can't share it with anybody because they'll just make fun of me. Oh. Till now? He goes smiles to himself. Mm. Till now. Oh. You and I enter the stadium and are directed to the upper level. After grabbing some snacks, we make our way up the set of stairs. The further up we go, the more my heart sinks. I had thought we had gotten good seats, but by this point, the ring looks like a postage stamp. We finally settle into our spots and wait for the match to start. Ah, I'm sorry. I thought I, I thought I got his tickets on the lower level. I look over to Hugo, who apparently didn't even hear me. He's vibrating with excitement. Oh. This is so cool. I guess he doesn't mind. I have to admit, I've been too embarrassed to come to one of these since I was a kid. What's there to be uh, embarrassed about? Everyone here loves wrestling. Plus, who are we? Uh, who are we even going to see that we know? We're like an hour out of Mabel Bay. Mm -hmm. I guess you're right. So, what do we have to look forward to tonight? Oh. Oh man, the lineup is stacked. All the matches are going to be great, but the one I'm really looking forward to is the Eastern Dragons match. The Eastern Dragon? Yeah, he's the wrestler as uh, Pablo Escobar. Escobar? But I guess he eventually had to change oh. it. Wrestler names are weird. He's actually an Iranian guy from Utah. Oh, so that's what your shirt's from. Yep, I've been following the guy since his debut in an indie wrestling league, and it's been amazing to see him rise through the ranks and into the professionals. Who's he up against? The Gorper Chill. Technique Rise? I don't think he's that good of a wrestler, and I don't think he, the fans like him. Certainly an interesting character, though. The stadium lights dim, and the crowd starts screaming. Butt Rock blasts through the sound system, and some pyrotechnics set off around the ring. Ladies and gentlemen of the sold out crowd in Mill Creek, Massachusetts, who's ready to power slam? Hugo and I scream. We watch two wrestlers, the Southern Dandy and Johnny Snowman, walk out to even more butt rock. The Southern Dandy mixes and drinks a mint julep in the ring before the match. The crowd eats it up. Mm -hmm. The Southern Dandy's from Maine. Is Johnny Snowman not from the North Pole? Mm -hmm. He's from Georgia, actually. After a long match, Johnny Snowman, who's dressed up like a muscular elf, does what Hugo calls a German suplex on the Southern Dandy. What did I just watch? It's like a death ballet where oily muscular dudes hug each other to the point of exhaustion. You're not wrong. Hmm. Wrestling is a sport of communication. All these guys train together to know not only how to perform moves, but how to respond to them. It allows them to look like they're not, uh, they're being hurt, but only kind of, only be kind of hurt. The crowd cheers as Johnny Snowman pins the Southern Dandy and is announced as the winner. The next match features a wrestler named Generation Y2K. 
who comes out looking like a hipster barista. He takes selfie with fans on the way up to the ring and pauses after everyone to post it on Instagram. He's really playing up the millennial thing, huh? He's sort of the boogeyman to old-time wrestling fans. His opponent, the old-timer, walks out. Oh. <laughs> the crowd seems to be divided in who they're rooting for. The old-timer pulls some pretty sweet moves after he takes out a walking game from under the stage and beats Generation Y2K over the head with it. Up against the rope, Generation Y2K blinds the old-timer with the flash on with his camera phone and is able to pin him with to win the match. He takes a celebratory selfie with his unconscious opponent. Hey, during a break, uh, Hugo and I leave to get refills from the concession stand. We wind our way through the clusters of wrestling fans to get to the line. So, what do you think so far? Uh, I'm glad I'm here with you. The wrestling cool is cool, but I really like seeing you or s you so enthusiastic. It's... Don't say hot. Don't say hot. Cool. Hey. You know, I'm kind of surprised. I was already expecting the crowd to just be a bunch of aggressive, sweaty older guys, but it's so diverse. I've even seen a bunch of families with their kids. Everyone looks super happy to be here. Mm. Oh yeah, that's how I got to re into wrestling. When I was a kid, my dad used to take me and my brothers to matches all the time. There's one gang of kids loitering in a corner. They are exceptionally loud, even over the dim of the stadium. Looking closer, I can't help but feel like those kids seem familiar. Oh god, I know these kids. There you go, students. Uh, so don't turn around when I tell you this, but some of your students are here. Hugo immediately tenses up. I don't know. Oh my god. I can't let them see me here. They'll never listen to me ever again. I position myself between the kids and Hugo, hoping that I can act as a human shield. I glance over the two, uh, group of children again, and I recognize that Colin kid. He kicks one of his friends in the shin and laughs. Man, that Colin kid is a piece of work. Colin? If he sees me here, he'll never let it go. He's a master manipulator. We have to get back to the relative safety of our seats. What's the plan? Uh... Create a diversion? I turn to Hugo. Hugo, I'm gonna draw their attention while well, they're busy watching me. Run back to the seats and I'll meet you there, okay? Don't get hurt out there. As Hugo be begins to leave, I turn to the crowd of people and start stomping around and raising my arms, as if I was trying to frighten off a bear. Hey everybody, look at me, I'm a big old wrestling fan who came all the way from Maple Bay to see this event. I wasn't that big of a wrestling fan to begin with, but in the time that I've known it, I've come to find it very endearing. I really enjoy watching those very oily boys get into fisticuffs, and I hope that you are all having a pleasant evening watching them as well. It's working. All the people near the concession stand have stopped to look at me. I feel my social anxiety hitting peak levels. There's only a finite amount of time I can keep distracting people. Quick, think of something. Uh... If I do a cartwheel, I'll probably fall. Just scream. I start screaming as loudly as I can. A long drawn out- ah! This is a trick I learned at a young age. If you can scream loud enough, you can pretty much get whatever you want. Out of the corner of my eye, I spot Hugo sneaking through the doors. Success. I stop screaming and do a curtsy. Thank you for your time. I run after Hugo and back to our seats. Man, everyone thinks that we're crazy. Hugo and I sit down and breathe a huge sigh of relief. Phew, that was close. Now we can hide out for the rest of the night and enjoy ourselves in the comfort of anonymity within a large crowd. The lights dim again. Oh. This is the match we've been waiting for. The corporate chill walks out to elevator music. He's wearing a three-piece suit and sunglasses. Once he gets to the ring, he takes off his sunglasses and rips the sleeve off of his suit jacket, flexing his arms for the crowd. One of the people from his entourage produces a graph chart and sets it up in the center of the ring. The corporate chill grabs a microphone. I got a message for the Eastern Dragon. If you refer to the graph in the center of the ring, you'll find a quarterly projection of how much I'm gonna kick your ass. The whole crowd erupts. 
Now if you direct your attention to the Jumbotron, we all look up at a PowerPoint presentation titled Kicking the Eastern Dragon's Ass. <clears throat> Ass. Key Performance Indicators. <laughs> the corporate show takes a laser pointer and gives a lengthy presentation on just how and why he'll defeat the Eastern Dragon. He showcases several well-utilized clip art graphics. That was... informative. The lights dim again and pan flute music plays. I think it's pan flute? I'm actually not sure if I know what a pan flute sounds like. The Eastern Dragon walks out to cheers from the crowd. Aren't uh, pan flutes a Central America thing? Ego shrugs. Hmm. Oh. Wrestling. The Eastern Dragon stands outside the ring and grabs a microphone. Corporate Chill, it's nice to see you again. More cheers from the crowd. That was a good presentation. The clip art was a very nice touch. He points to the Corporate Chill menacingly. I'm looking forward to a nice, exciting match. The crowd doesn't really know what to do here. Hmm. He's, uh, he's not the best at trash talk, but I promise he's one of the most talented wrestlers you'll ever see. The match starts, and it's just as exciting as Hugo had hyped it up to be. The Eastern Dragon performs some ridiculous aerial stunts that make me concerned for his safety. He does what Hugo calls a moonsault from the top of the rope onto the corporate chill. The air in the stadium is electric, as these two athletes lock arms and try to m demolish one another. I can't help but get into it. The Gorbachev chill pile drives the Eastern Dragon, who looks passed out in the center of the ring. He glides up to the top rope and motions to the cheering crowd. No, oh, no, he's about to do his finishing move. The Gorbachev louder. <laughs> the Gorbachev chill poses at the top of the ropes. The Eastern Dragon still isn't moving. Could this be the end of his young career? Get up, Eastern Dragon. Ah. You can do it, Eastern Dragon. The Gorbachev chill launches off the top rope in a huge arch. He brings his elbow down on the Eastern Dragon with the full force of a Fortune 500 company putting local vendors out of business. Ouch. The Gorbachev chill pins the Eastern Dragon and the match ends. Hugo sinks into his chair. Eh. Man, he should have won that. I sit down with Hugo. What a match. Ah. It was amazing. I, I think I'm a fan of wrestling now. Hugo looks over to me and our eyes catch. I'm glad. The event goes on and we have a little downtime before the next match. We decide to just relax in our seats to avoid the middle schoolers. It's unlikely they would ever notice us in the upper level nosebleeds. I look up at the Jumbotron. Oh hey, they're doing the kiss cam thing. Oh yeah! It zooms in on a bunch of cute couples who all do a quick smooch to uh, rock his cheers from the crowd. Oh, that's so nice. And then it zooms in on Hugo and I. What? <laughs> what? What do I do here? I look over to Hugo and see the same mortifying expression on his face. The entire crowd is chanting and neither of us know what to do. Uh, what should I do? Uh, give the crowd what they want. I slowly lean in, awkwardly tilting my head. Cheers from the crowd erupt all around me. I look back up to the Jumbotron and see a couple behind us making out with full force. Oh. Hugo and I turn beet red and slink back into our chairs. Oh no. So much for laying low, I guess. The rest of the match thankfully goes off without incident. Hugo and I eventually laugh off the kiss cam and get back into the wrestling. After the show ends, he convinces me to hang back and let the rest of the crowd exit so we wouldn't risk running into Colin and his awful group of friends. By the time Hugo and I rock back to his car, most of the wrestling fans have cleared out. The parking lot is surprisingly empty save for a beat up car parked a few spots down from us. We rarely keep an eye out for any stray middle schoolers as we hang out by my car. Man, that was an experience. Oh. Right? It's one thing to watch it on TV, but to be there in person is just... Wow. Thank you again. I would have never gotten to experience this if it weren't for you. It's just me and Hugo in front of the car in an empty parking lot. I look down. Kinda of funny, about the kiss cam, huh? Hmm. Yeah, it was super funny. 
but neither of us are smiling. We look into each other's eyes and I can feel warmth radiating from my cheeks. We stare at each other for just a little bit too long. Hey, cool shirt. I turn around to see a guy in a hoodie and basketball shorts walking up to us, a duffel bag slung over his shoulder. I haven't seen one of those in years. Whoa. Oh my god. Uh, yeah, I got it from a trade with this guy from streetsmarks.net. I love that website. Someone always posts these awesome super detailed breakdowns of matches in the indie circuit. Have you seen those? The name's like, uh, J, J, J something. JD Slamaker? Yeah, that's him. Nice name. Those are my write ups. You're JD Slamaker? You're kidding. Oh man, I'm such a huge fan of your work. So nice to meet you. The man vigorously shakes Hugo's hand. Oh. I'm honored. Ah oh, man, I wish I could stay in chat. I have so many questions. But I'll PM you on the forums if you ever want to talk shop. Absolutely. The man stalks, uh, starts walking away. Hugo coughs nervously to get his attention again. Um, is there any chance you could sign my shirt? The guy turns around and beams. Sure thing. Wait. It only f it all finally clicks into place for me. He's the Eastern Dragon. You're the Eastern Dragon. I love your work. <laughs> Thank you, man. The Eastern Dragon signs Hugo's shirts. Shirt waves goodbye and walks to his car. I stand there with my mouth open the entire time. That was the Eastern Dragon. Yes. He, he likes my work. Dude, you're like friends with the Eastern Dragon now. He's gonna PM me. Hugo and I high five. He's so excited he's shaking. Mr. Vega? Oh man. Colin and his cronies just pop out of nowhere. Oh no, here we go. What? Colin, nice to see you and your friends all the way out here. What are you doing here? I don't see the library anywhere near us. <sighs> I... I was watching the Power Slam series with my friend. Huh, <laughs> Mr. Vega likes wrestling? What a fart knocker. Actually, that's pretty cool. Shut up, dickweed. Nah, man. That's actually rad as hell. Who were you just talking to? Probably one of your stupid book nerd friends. Actually, he was talking to his good buddy, the Eastern Dragon. All of Colin's friends gasp. Guys, come on, he's lying. There's no way the Eastern Dragon would hang out with these losers. Oh, oh yeah? How did I get his autograph then? Colin's friends lose their mind, screaming their heads off. Colin is red with anger. Ah. See you in class, bitch. Holy shit. <laughs> you... You can't say that. Who's gonna believe you? Hugo and I hop into the car to the tune of more children screaming. We laugh all the way home. Holy shit. Hugo and I descend the stairs of his home into the... I'm so shook. Uh, his wrestling man cave where we both crack a beer. We're both winding down after an exciting evening. So if you were a wrestler, what would your persona be? Hugo answers immediately. Oh. J.D. Slamger, my forum name. I gotta represent my literary roots. My costume would be a tweed coat, and my finishing move would be a catcher in the eye, where I poke my opponent's eyes out and call them a phony. Wow. Hmm. I've given it a lot of thought. What about you? Hmm. I would be... <laughs> I would be dad. I don't even wrestle. I just throw dad puns at the opponent until they submit. Nice to meet you, Hungry. I'm dad. You know. I'm just now realizing that I don't know any actually wrestling move, actual wrestling moves. You know, I could teach you some. Oh. I smirk. I'm game. Hugo and I square up in the center of the room, ready to go at it. Mm -hmm. I'll go easy on you. This is very erotic. On dad? Absolutely not. And before I know it, I'm on the floor. Hugo wraps his legs around me and it squeezes. I can't move. Oh. This is a figure four leg lock. If I were applying full force right now, you would be in extreme pain. He effortlessly twists around again and grabs my arm. Good lord, he's strong. Any movement on my end is useless. And this is an armbar. You're... 
uh, pretty good. Hmm? You can tap out anytime you like. Not a chance. Hugo flips around one last time on top of me. He hooks his arm under my leg and presses his body down my chest. Ah. And this is me pinning you. Our faces are inches apart right now. I can't tell if I'm breathing heavily because of the physical activity or because of something else. Ooh. Go for it. I lean forward and kiss Hugo, who seems just as surprised as I am. I pull back, a little embarrassed, but he kisses me again. He slowly releases his submission hold on me and cradles my face in his hands. He presses his forehead against mine and we laugh. I, I, I guess we both win? Guess so. I pull him back for another kiss. This is so cute. Do you have any more moves to show hey. me? I think I might have a few. And then we totally fucked. Looks like Paradise Lost just got found. Oh god. Okay, I got an S. I am very happy with that. Spicy boy. Quiz master. Hey, hey, who's ready for a crazy graduation party? You, uh, you don't have to be on right now, Quinn. It's just a party. W what do you mean? It's the, uh, uh, you know what? Keep that energy. Hold it close. You deserve it. Just like me and my living wife deserve happiness, right? You know it. <laughs> I turn to see Ernest, looking like he has something to say. Hey, Ernest. What does he want to say? Uh, thanks for being nice to my dad. Aww. Whoa. People are really mean to him sometimes. Oh my god. I mean, I guess I am too. But, um... He seems happy when you're around, so, uh, that's cool. Well, geez, Ernest, I don't know what to say. You know, I think people got you pegged wrong. You got a soft side. If you tell anyone I told you that, I'm gonna set your trash can on fire. There it is. Also, you don't know me. Before I can respond, Ernest walks away, a cloud of vapor trailing behind him. Well, that was at least a little pleasant. Looks like someone's been waiting to talk to you. I glance over to the back of the yard, where Hugo is sitting on a bench beneath our cherry blossom tree. He smiles at me. I'll leave you to it. Me and the Emmas are gonna get some ice cream. Love you, Pops. Amanda runs off to join her friends. I take a seat next to Hugo as the last guests make their way out of the party. Cool shirt. Hey. Thanks. It reminds me of a special night. So the secret's out, huh? Hugo likes wrestling. You know, I was really nervous to come here dressed like this, but everybody in the neighborhood, they were nothing but accepting of me and my hobbies. It turns out that Craig's a huge fan too. And Colin told everyone at school that I'm into wrestling, but it actually backfired on him. Now the kids have a weird sort of respect for me now. A few of them even asked me to be the sponsor for the wrestling club. Hmm. Not the Olympic wrestling. The wrestling that I like. I actually like both, but there's an important distinction, and I think you know which one I'm talking about. See? Just goes to show that there's nothing wrong with being open about what you like. I agree. And as long as I'm being open, I'm also a huge fan of very handsome dads who throw great parties for their kid, and love a good word jumble. I blush. And I'm a big fan of... Quick, think of something clever. Hugo's? This... this Hugo, specifically. Hugo laughs. Yes. He drapes an arm around my shoulder and pulls me closer. He plants a soft kiss on my forehead. I'm happy here. <clears throat> me too. Hugo and I watch the sun dip below the horizon together. Hey, do you think maybe later you could show me some new wrestling moves? Mm -hmm. Spicy boy, how about I show you my pump-handled pile driver? I can't help but giggle. What's that? Oh. You'll see. Oh my. That is the kind of dad I like to see. So yeah, that was Hugo's ending. Uh, I enjoyed that better. I like that. I think we have four dads left. Or three dads. There's Joseph, 
uh, Damien and Craig. And we're gonna do Craig next. So watch out for that. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching my video. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you enjoyed my reading. And I'll see you next time. Bye.